Hey everyone. In this video, we'll cover OO Genesis. Our three questions are the same ones from the last video, but for OO Genesis. They are How does OO Genesis occur in humans? What are the names of the cells that are formed? And how does ploidy and chromosome number change throughout OO Genesis? Oogenesis is the production of the egg, and as we'll see, actually requires the sperm in order to complete the process. Most of oogenesis occurs in the ovaries of the female. It starts with diploid cells that form even before the female is born. These cells are called oogonial stem cells. They divide by mitosis to either form more of themselves. Or to form oogonia, which are also diploid. Oogonia is plural, while oogonium is the singular form of the word. An oogonium can also divide by mitosis, producing more oogonia. Or it can go through the cell cycle and then enter prophase I of meiosis. Once this cell Enters prophase one, it's now called a primary oocyte. The primary oocyte remains paused at prophase one until the female enters puberty. Within the ovary, each primary oocyte is surrounded by a collection of cells that form a protective follicle. At this stage, the follicles are called primordial follicles. Primordial meaning the beginning of. The primary oocyte proceeds through meiosis I, but the cytoplasm is not evenly distributed, resulting in a large cell and a small one, both of which are haploid. The smaller cell is the first polar body, and the larger cell is the secondary oocyte. The secondary oocyte. Begins meiosis II, pausing at metaphase II. The word egg refers to the oocyte as it moves through meiosis. Within the ovary, initially, the eggs are primary oocytes within follicles. As a primary oocyte proceeds through meiosis I. And part of meiosis II, again pausing in metaphase II, the follicle around it develops. So by the end of meiosis I, the now secondary oocyte is enclosed within a mature follicle. Many primary follicles will begin development. But only one will complete it and form a mature follicle. The rest die off. If you're interested in learning more about female infertility and treatments, check out the link I'll leave below this video. It's a nice summary that's written by a fertility specialist of how hormonal changes and competition among follicles results in only one follicle finishing development. It also explains. How hormone treatments can allow older women with less follicles to become pregnant, overcoming their so-called biological clock. During ovulation, the mature follicle releases the secondary oocyte, or egg, into a duct called the fallopian tube. Usually, only one egg is released, but if two are released, this can lead to fraternal twins. If both eggs are fertilized, twins can also result from hormonal infertility treatments. Women undergoing treatment for infertility are often given a hormone called follicle stimulating hormone, which does what it sounds like it does: it stimulates follicles to mature and release eggs. So much so that it can cause multiple eggs to be released at once. So women who conceive in this way have a higher chance of having twins. 
when the egg, now a secondary oocyte, is released during ovulation, it will stay in metaphase 2 until a sperm enters the cell. Here. Which then causes the secondary oocyte to finish meiosis 2. So, the secondary oocyte requires the sperm to enter before it can complete meiosis. If no sperm enters the egg following ovulation, the egg is then removed from the body during menstruation, also known as a woman's period. Meiosis II is also an asymmetrical division, with one cell getting most of the cytoplasm and the sperm nucleus. The smaller cell is the second polar body, and the larger one we usually call the fertilized egg, though technically fertilization isn't until the nuclei fuse. This cell is also known as the ovum. This single ovum, with a nucleus containing 23 chromosomes and containing a sperm with 23 chromosomes from the male, is the final product of oogenesis. So, only one gamete, the ovum, is produced by one oogonium completing meiosis. Once the haploid nucleus from the egg and the haploid nucleus from the sperm fuse, the cell is now a diploid zygote, which of course develops into a human. So, that's oogenesis. But what's the function of these polar bodies? To answer this question, let me ask another. How many chromatids does each of these cells have? I'll give you a moment to pause the video and try to answer this question. Okay, diploid cells in humans have 46 chromatids, so the oogonium has 46. When the oogonium goes through the cell cycle and replicates its chromosomes and enters prophase 1, the now primary oocyte has 96 chromatids. Once the primary oocyte divides by meiosis 1, the first polar body and the secondary oocyte have 46. But in order for the quote unquote egg to have 23, it needs to divide again, which it does through meiosis 2, yielding a second polar body with 23 and the ovum, with its nucleus, also having 23. When the sperm and ovum nuclei fuse, the zygote is now back to 46. So what's the function of the polar bodies? They take half the chromatids from the egg during meiosis 1 and during meiosis 2, so the number of chromatids can be reduced to 23. Having accomplished this, the two polar bodies eventually disintegrate. The timing of oogenesis is very different from spermatogenesis. Spermatogenesis is a fairly constant process and takes about 50 days to complete, though because it's continuous, sperm is continually available. Oogenesis takes place in multiple places and over many years. As we said before, the oogonial stem cells form before birth, as do the oogonia, and all the primary oocytes, so that, at birth, the female's ovaries have a few million of these primary oocytes within primary follicles. These follicles and their primary oocytes stay in prophase 1 in the ovaries for 12 to 50 years. Why 12 to 50? Well, 12 because that's about when females enter puberty, 
when hormonal changes cause primary oocytes to enter meiosis and be released during ovulation. One at a time, once every month. 50 is about when women enter menopause, usually when they have less than about 400 follicles left. After menopause, the primary oocytes will no longer develop and release eggs. So that whole time, the primary oocytes are just hanging out, staying paused in prophase one. If there was an award for the most patient cell, I'd nominate the primary oocytes. Okay, bad science jokes aside, that's a long time for cells to exist without dividing, and it's pretty remarkable that they can survive for that long and then still complete oogenesis and fertilization. So in summary, that, my friends, is how human life begins. Spermatogenesis produces the sperm, and oogenesis produces the egg. And of course, fertilization produces the zygote. I hope you all have a new appreciation of what goes into producing gametes and a zygote. That's it for our videos on human spermatogenesis, oogenesis, and fertilization. Next, we'll examine how this occurs in plants. See you then.